What is the science of salmon? Salmon questions asked and answered. You came up with some really wonderful questions about salmon. And I spent a lot of time trying to find all your answers. So let's find out. What were the questions? The first question came from Josephine. How many types of salmon are there? There are seven species of Pacific salmon. Five of them occur in North American waters, Chinook, Coho, Chum, Sockeye, and Pink. Some scientists view the steelhead trout as a species of salmon as well. Masu and Imago salmon occur only in Asia. There is one species of Atlantic salmon. So these are the five that we find in our area. There's the Chinook, the Coho, the Sockeye, the pink, and the chum. The coho is the one that we raised in our tank at school. The next question comes from Amanda. What is the most common type of salmon? Pink salmon are the most abundant Pacific salmon. They are sometimes called humpies or humpback salmon because of the distinctive hump they develop on their back when they spawn. So here's that hump they're talking about. Makes them very interesting looking. The next question was asked by four of our friends. Tegan, Lucy, Skylar, and Theo asked, how big do salmon get? Pacific salmon can range in size from five to well over 100 pounds. The pink, also known as the humpback, can weigh up to five pounds. The sockeye, also known as the red, weigh up to seven pounds. The coho, also known as the silver, weigh up to 15 pounds. The chum, also known as the dog, weigh up to 10 pounds. The chinook, also known as the king, weigh between 40 and 70 pounds, but can get up to over 100 pounds. Skylar and Santino asked, how old do they get? And Tegan asked a related question, how long do they live? Pacific salmon can live between two to seven years, depending on the species. The pink live up to two years. The sockeye live four to five years. The coho live up to three years. The chum live four to five years. And the chinook live five to seven years as long as a predator doesn't get them. How long does a salmon grow in order to become an adult? Josephine asked. The salmon spend about one to five years, depending on the species, in the open ocean, where they gradually become sexually mature. That means they get ready to go home and spawn. The adult salmon then return primarily to their home streams to spawn. Atlantic salmon spend between one and four years at sea. Olivia and Tegan asked, what do salmon eat? What do grown-up salmon eat? In general, young salmon eat insects, such as stoneflies, mayflies, and caddisflies, invertebrates, and plankton. Adults eat other fish, squid, eels, and shrimp. Unlike all other salmon, the sockeye salmon has a diet that consists almost entirely of plankton. So if you look over here, here is a photo of plankton, and this is a photo of some shrimp they would eat, and these are the different flies they like to eat when they're young. Josephine also asked, how many eggs do salmon lay? A female may lay many eggs before she is spawned out and dies. A female salmon will dig a series of depressions, usually four to five, known as a red, in which to lay her eggs. The pink can lay between 1,000 and 2,000 eggs. The sockeye lay between 2,000 and 5,000 eggs. The coho lay between 1,500 and 4,500 eggs. The chum lay between 2,400 eggs and 3,100 eggs. And the chinook 
can lay between 3,000 and 14,000 eggs and can even lay up to as many as 17,000 eggs. If you look here, here's the female laying the eggs. You can see them coming out right here. And if you look up here, we have some little salmon eggs that are starting to get their eyes. Sylvia asked, why do some salmon turn red when they get old? As salmon approach their spawning grounds, they begin to absorb their scales. The carotenoid pigments in their flesh are transferred to the skin and eggs. The red skin makes them more visible and may signal their readiness to spawn. The pigments may also help the fish absorb oxygen from the water. So look at how bright those are. Theo asked, how sharp of teeth do spawners have? Salmon have teeth that are sharp and needle-like, which they use to grab their prey. They, their tongue also has two sharp shafts. However, salmon do not chew their food. So they use them to catch or to fight other spawners, but they don't use them to chew their food. If you look at their teeth, they are needle-like, so very, very sharp. Sylvia also asked, why do they die after laying eggs? Pacific salmon use all their energy for returning to their home stream, for making eggs and digging the nest. Most of them stop eating when they return to fresh water and have no energy left for a return trip to the ocean after spawning. So once they die though, their bodies become food for other animals and also nutrients for plants, which then feed the insects that then feed their babies. So it's kind of amazing. Jacob and Santino asked, how fast do salmon swim? Salmon in their saltwater phase travel an estimated 18 miles a day, but they are capable of maintaining an average of 34 miles per day over long distances. Salmon can migrate more than 3,000 kilometers upstream through fresh water to spawn. Depending on the flow rate of the stream, that means how fast the water's going, a coho salmon can swim from 0.8 miles per hour up to 1.67 miles per hour. They can sprint up to a speed of 24.5 miles per hour. That's about 36 feet per second. So imagine our classroom. They can move from one end of our classroom all the way to the other in a matter of one second. So they can swim really fast. Jacob also asked, how strong are salmon? And Harvey asked, how do salmon leap out of water? Now these two questions are kind of connected. A salmon heading upstream to spawn can leap up to more than 10 feet to scale a waterfall. That means they have to be really strong. To do this, the fish does a vertical swim and jump out of the water. It points its head in the direction it wants to go while flexing the back part of its body into a tight S shape. Their tail is over to one side that allows them to generate a lot of thrust backwards and to the other side against the water as they sweep their tail. They beat their tail back and forth as they ascend through the water column until they've left the water. So they use their back tail and the, the S-shaped twist. You can see it right here on this fish. See how he's moving? It's like they move it back and forth to create thrust, which lifts them up out of the water and their tails are so strong that they can jump up 10 feet. That's about the height of our ceiling in our classroom. Pretty amazing. Calvin asked, are salmon scales hard or soft? I was curious. I had never thought about that before. Most fish, including salmon, have a layer of scales covering their skin. Scales are small, hard plates 
like fingernails that cover the body for protection. So I've caught a lot of fish in my day, but I never really thought about how hard their scales are because they seem they're so flexible, but they're as hard as fingernails. Maggie asked, do salmon communicate? While not much is known about how salmon communicate, it is believed that some species of salmon communicate by hormones and chemical signals. They've also got a very good sense of smell. So those hormones they release and those chemical signals they send out and then they sense it. This salmon was pretty funny. He said, I swam 1,000 miles today. What did you do for exercise? Well, I certainly didn't swim 1,000 miles, but boy, that fish sure did. Cameron asked, how do salmon get their colors? So we heard about how their color changes on the outside, but let's learn a little bit about how the color looks on the inside and how that happens. The actual color of salmon flesh varies from almost white to light orange, depending on their levels of carotenoid astaxanthin, due to how rich a diet of krill and shrimp the fish feeds on. So their colors change depending on how much krill and shrimp they eat. So this is the flesh of a coho salmon, the sockeye salmon, the king salmon, the chum salmon, and the pink salmon. Josephine asked, which salmon is delicious? Well, I think they're all delicious, but this is what most people say. Chinook salmon, also known as king salmon, is considered by many to be the best tasting of the salmon bunch. They have a high fat content and corresponding rich flesh that ranges from white to a deep red color. People also favor any salmon that call the Copper River home. You'll often hear about the Copper River salmon. People wait all year to get some of that. And Katie asked, what is the most common thing to put on salmon? Now, salmon can be prepared in many ways. The most common recipes, including topping it with lemon and herbs, or a creamy dill sauce, or a brown sugar glaze, or a gingered honey glaze, or a pecan crust. However you make it, it's delicious. So what other questions do you have about salmon?